Well, the beauty of being able to come downstairs early in the morning and start doing videos and having done this for almost two years of rolling out of the sack, making coffee, feeding the animals, and then sitting at the table here with no hair or makeup department after being in that world for a long time. It's actually kind of refreshing. I'm actually enjoying just turning on the camera, which is basically my phone, and just talking and being creative and doing very little editing. So when you see me, I literally have just rolled out of the sack, sometimes just minutes before, but with these things on my mind, even before I start, I might go to bed at night, take some notes about what I want to say in the morning, and just kind of let it blossom a little bit in my head. Other times it's a stream of consciousness. And I read so much that I'm always high on the input, which means that you're going to be high on the output. And that means not watching television. Because I, th I don't think the mind works when you watch TV. It's, it's like, it just does nothing. It doesn't cause the brain to interact like reading. When I'm reading something from Hemingway, let's just say fiction, or nonfiction by C.S. Lewis, or fiction by C.S. Lewis, my mind is creating pictures. Whereas when I'm watching TV, the pictures are already created for me. So that's why I love reading so much. And that's why I like reading the news as opposed to watching the news, because it's unemotional. Let me take a sip of my coffee here. This is the usual. Ah, so good. <laughs> there are so many slick YouTube channels out there, and they're good. They're like, it's like watching TV. I don't know what this is like. This is just like stopping over a friend's house and having coffee with them, right? Well, I'm in a t-shirt today. This is what I slept in. And it's now 59 degrees going up to 76. I had heard, someone said it's gonna go up to 81 today, which yanks your chain. This is at, the, you know, the first day of spring is March 20th. And this is the time of year when it'll be a really nice day. And even the trees, they get tricked into budding a little bit. And you'll see like little things popping out of the ground, all the bulb flowers. A couple of days of sunshine, the grass starts turning green. Like by the end of this month, my yard is going to be very, very green. The magnolia trees, you're going to start seeing them. Those are the ones that I'm talking about. They get tricked into budding. I mean, you get a couple like sunny days in the middle of winter and all of a sudden the buds start popping. And I was very, very tempted to take the Vespa to work today. Very tempted. I don't feel like riding in the rain. There is a little bit of possibility of rain and I'm just not into riding into the rain today for my first ride of the season. Interesting stuff coming. February 9th was my two year YouTube anniversary. I believe my first video that I did was February 9th, two years ago. So that's kind of cool. What's happened in the past couple years? I think I've inspired a few people to start channels. I think I made some people realize how hard it is to keep it going with the content that just turning on the camera and talking there's more to it than just turning on the camera and talking. You have to engage your audience. You have to build your following. You have to be responsive. I'm as responsive, responsive as I can and work two jobs. Like literally go to work every day. And as you know, I am in the hair industry, which is labor intensive and I try to make it personable. Those of you that have sat in my chair know that it's 
what I'm not doing is saying, okay, next, and you come over and sit in the chair, and then I just give you a haircut, you give me money, and then you leave. I like to have a, what I call like a pre-service interview, and especially, this is the interesting thing about my clientele. My guests travel to see me. And I would hate to just say, next, <laughs> like in your typical salon or barbershop, next, and 30 minutes later you leave. I mean, I have people flying across the country, people driving six hours, people who are on business trips that are five hours away saying, hmm, the Sultan's only five hours from here. I wonder if I can get up there and get a haircut or a beard trim. And pretty soon it's going to be ladies doing the same thing as I'm kind of branching back out again into ladies here and getting all my muscle memory back and all my skills back and that, just creating beautiful people in general. So it's, it's been a trip. Product reviews have been a trip. Boxes show up at my door almost every day. There's just no way I can review everything. And I'm moving to a sponsorship model, which means people can sponsor videos, people can sponsor the channel, you can sponsor it for a week, you can sponsor it for a month. And I will send you the details for that if you want, just email me, gb at georgebruno.com. And I'll put that information down below as well. But if I just did reviews all day of all the products that I got, I'd never make any money. And I know I increase sales for people. When I make mentions of products, those products get sold. It's an effective form of communication and promoting a business. You know about me because of my repetition. I'm kind of like the waves beating on the rocks. The waves will win. The rocks will wear down. And that's what it's like when you advertise or promote your business. It costs money. You have to do it. And I'm happy to do it for you. If you want me to promote your product somehow, some way, let me know. Email me, gb at georgebruno.com. We're starting a new series real soon. Since I lost all this weight, I mean, look at me. I'm thin now. I wouldn't say thin. I'm thinner now. I'm starting a workout series. And I probably will end up being the Sultan of Sweat. <laughs> and they're going to be early morning workout videos. And that'll be interesting. And it's going to be for the, I would say, for the middle-aged guy. Or I would say probably the person who would benefit from it the most would be 35 to 40 on up. The ones who would really, really, really benefit from it are going to be over 50. And the ones who are going to be super inspired by it are going to be 60. And I know that's my audience, just I'm narrowing it right down, male or female. But I just love the whole concept of motivating and inspiring people that I never met and getting emails every single day, literally now. You can see it's light out. It's not 4.30 or 5 like I usually do when I, when I make my normal morning videos. This is my first cup of coffee. I literally spent an hour replying to emails. Even before <clears throat> I set up the phone and started recording this. Excuse me a second. You know, I think now, <clears throat> now is the time. I'm looking at one of the cats playing with something on the deck. And that is so funny right now. That is so cute. And I never see this cat ever playing with anything. <laughs> She's always so serious. And just to see like this little kitten come out of her, it, it's kind of funny. Very cute. Oh, and she just spotted me. <laughs> Love that. Those of you that have animals, this is like really weird. Those of you that have animals,
Oh, I am way too entertained by this. Those of you that have animals, do you ever feel like, <laughs> this is going to sound weird, like the heck with people, I'll take my animals any day. Do you ever think, like, if I just had a small little farm and I had some goats for goat's milk? Oh, my little baby Joey is up here right now. You want to see my little baby Joey? There's Joey. Hey, Joey. <laughs> he's, he's the littlest one. Joey. Joey. <laughs> He's looking at the cat out of the day. There he is. Hi, Joey. <laughs> His tail's going wild. That's funny. Be careful there. Be careful. Daddy's recording here. Careful, kiddo. <laughs> Did you ever feel like you could just have like a little farm with goats and chickens? and plant your food and have some barn cats and a dog following you around on the internet no television do you ever feel that way? do you ever feel like you could exist that way? man I feel that way all the time sometimes I feel like and this is really odd for me it's odd. It's perceived as odd by others about me. I don't think it's odd. When I go to the beach, I like laying on the sand without a towel or a blanket, beach towel or blanket. I literally like my body to be in contact with the earth. As far as like a pillow, I kind of push a bunch of sand up and put it underneath my neck and I feel the earth I feel God created the earth for us we take care of the earth it, what some people call environmentalism was once called conservation when I was growing up it was called conservation not environmentalism and it wasn't a religion it wasn't like a cult right now environmentalism is a cult I would rather worship God than worship God's creation. So for me, I take care of the earth because it's God's gift to me. That's how I feel about the world. So I don't litter because of that. Not because it's a this cultic, weird, worshipy kind of thing. I'd rather worship God, but take care of the things that he gave me. So what some might call conservation, what some call environmentalism I just call stewardship being a steward taking care of things that are in that are in your sphere things like when you go camping or hiking always leave the place better than when you found it equal or better like literally bringing a, a plastic bag with you when you go hiking so if you see trash on a trail, you pick it up and you haul it out rather than leaving it up to somebody else. That's being a good steward. And I take care of the earth because the earth has to take care of me. So I go to the beach and I lay on the sand, just literally lay on the sand. I will go out in my backyard and lay on the grass. And I know <clears throat> there's times when neighbors are ready to call 911 thinking that holy cow Bruno just died <laughs> I like laying on the ground with no barrier if I could do it naked I would if I could do it naked and not get arrested I would <laughs> but it's like letting God's creation minister to your body heal you how do we, how the heck do we even get on this topic? And I feel it's just so, um, this is going to sound weird. The whole concept at one with nature, it almost as, as a, as a Christian man, it feels, it even feels kind of weird for me to say that, but I know what I mean. And I know there are some people out there 
that are going to say, whoa, he's really part of some weird movement. I'm not. I'm not. Something to think about.